Allah. We start in the name of Allah Rahman Rahim. O oh, praise to Allah Rabbul Alameen. I may the peace and blessing be upon Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, upon his family, his companions, and upon all those who follow the path of Haq and the path of truth until the day of judgment. And I do dua to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, all of us inshallah gathered here today inshallah will be on this path. Uh, brothers, assalamu alaikum inshallah. Um, I need to start by apologizing. If you recall last week, um, I said the, um, the benefit of these study circles is about gaining knowledge. And the gaining knowledge is always a two-way process. Um, and if you look for, li- look for the life of the imma, <coughs> the scholars, <coughs> look for the life of the sahaba, how they never had any bragging rights. They were very humble. And whenever they engaged, they always engaged with the view that they would be learning something. Even if they had more knowledge, they engaged with the view they would learn something. And I said to you last week that, um, you know, throughout this we are only human beings and in the process um, we will make mistakes and there will be errors. And the advantage of therefore having people like you in the audience, inshallah, is you'll always be there to raise the question and correct when error is made. And um, I have to hold my hands up high that at the end my wife said to me, she goes, Rahan, you made a big mistake. And you know what tends to happen? Even though you make these statements, you become very defensive. You know, the shaitanic trait of being arrogant kicks in, no, no, how could I make a mistake? And she said, look, you know, subhanAllah, you know, the example you gave at the beginning was a very nice example of, um, of the Sahabi and how he spent three nights in and around the Haram that being taken by Ali ibn Abi Talib is a fantastic, everything he said was right. So I said, what's your problem? She goes, you quoted the wrong Sahabi. <laughs> so I went back, checked my up, and she was right. Go other bless alhamdulillah. The example we gave was of Tufayl ibn Amr al-Dawsi. And actually what I had done is the book I was reading, I wrote the lines of two Sahabi, and I cross-referred them. The actual example was of Abu Dhar al-Tari. She had also read the book and that's why she was correcting me, alhamdulillah. So uh, she goes, the example was perfect, but the mistake you made, you quoted the wrong Sahabi. So I wanted to make sure that you at least have the correct Sahabi. If, for example, you're going to start quoting it in your talks. And so I said, no, brother, so and your wife saying, brother, you know, so finally you made a mistake. Um, so I wanted to correct that, inshallah, and I apologize for that mistake, inshallah. But this is why I say, um, and there's a very nice philosophy. One, uh, a learned man, he said to me, he said, Rohan, I can never, ever lose an argument. I can never lose an argument. You bring me anyone. You bring me any scholar. You bring me any scholar from history. You bring me Imam Shafi'i. You bring Imam Abu Hanifa. Bring me even the Sahaba. I will never ever lose an argument. And you sit there thinking, you're so arrogant. How dare you say something like this, you know? Muslims should be humble. He goes, no, I will never lose an argument. Does I think, brother, it's very wise that you explain yourself. What do you mean you will never lose an argument? That sounds very conceited, very arrogant, very condescending. He goes, Ron, look, if I discuss with somebody and I convince them that I am right and they are wrong, I have won the argument. If they convince me that they are right and I am wrong, I have also won the argument because I have done something. So I can never lose. I can never ever lose an argument because I will always gain something. Either I am right or I am wrong and I have been corrected. So how could I ever lose an argument? I said, oh, Jazakallah, don't be arrogant. <laughs> so in the same way, inshallah, throughout this process, you know there will be times, and, and I always encourage you that if you believe there is something that doesn't make sense, something you want to clarify, please ask me, inshallah, and hopefully together, inshallah, we can learn and we, we can work through the, the culture together, inshallah, Jazakallah. And before we start, these are the two things that we always do. Are there any questions that people want to raise, any questions people want to ask, any comments? Anything interesting happened during the week? Any issues in your life that you want to raise as, as fiqh issues that you want to clarify? Any questions? Uh, if not, then we go on to a brief revision of last week for those who were not here. And then we jump into the subject of today. And today, it's, um, it's, it's, a very, it's probably one of the most important subjects, but it's not the most easiest um, to enjoy necessarily, because it's sometimes very dry. You know, and, and so I will try to, inshallah, make it as informative and as, uh, as entertaining as possible to really gain the, 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 the enjoyment out of what we discuss. So firstly, any questions, any issues that people want to raise? Nothing at all? Nothing which has caught your attention? No? 
I won't, I won't come to you. Yes. <laughs> Brother was saying that in Shama that um, in such an arena there, there will always be some um, questions which maybe sisters want to have or personal issues related to women's issues and it will be very good to try to get the opportunity to invite or have a sister that could uh, address them and give them the opportunity to also ask questions without the brothers being present. So inshallah what we're going to try to do if we can is um, have whether you know somebody and you can inshallah you can re- recommend somebody or I'll we'll try to arrange with my wife inshallah to start coming every week and at the end of our session hopefully which will then only last one and a half hours it then gives half an hour for the sisters to stay behind and they can raise any questions and raise any issues that they want to raise which are of a personal nature which doesn't allow us and are meant to be present because it's not a it's quite sensitive these kinds of issues and discussions so Jazak Rafa we'll try to arrange that for next and hopefully inshallah the sisters are okay with that and maybe it gives you an opportunity to come with a lot of questions that you may want to ask of a, of a personal nature which you feel uncomfortable addressing us and having the men in the audience okay there's absolutely no questions and no issues that you've come across in the week which I'm quite surprised about given the fact the news that we've had over the last couple of days for example in Texas we'll move on inshallah um, in terms, of re- in terms of revision, I'm gonna, like you see, you'll see this every single week for the next three or four weeks, and then after that, there probably won't be much of a revision, we'll just be moving on section by section, but the first three or four sessions are very, very important, so it's uh, worthwhile running through them. Uh, in our first study, like we talked about the issue of sincerity, where sincerity was paramount. Having knowledge alone is not sufficient. We said sincerity is absolute a requirement in order for us to make use of our knowledge. And the three aspects of insincerity that we've discussed about, does everyone remember what they were, the three aspects of sincerity? Anyone want to shout those out? <coughs> motivation, which is motivation purely for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We don't gain knowledge for the sake of knowledge itself. We don't gain knowledge because we want to show off in order to demonstrate how much knowledge we have compared to other people. Rather we gain knowledge because it is a pleasure for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone and no one else. That was the first characteristic we defined regarding sincerity. And what, what, what were the other two? Action. Action. That knowledge has no value unless it's connected to action. And Allah tells us in the Quran, Ya ayyuhaladheena amanu lema taqulunu ma la taf'aloon Oh you who believe, why do you say that which you do not do? Why do you say that which you do not do? And very important that sincerity, it demands action, but action which is the correct action. Not just any action, but action which is done correctly according to how Islam has specified for it to be done. And that having a, a good intention, having the right motivation is insufficient if the actual action that you do contradicts Islam. So sincerity also requires the action to be done but done correctly. And that's a, char- a key characteristic of sincerity. And the third characteristic was what? Yes. Convey that we have to carry this deen. We're not selfish. Islam did not come for Arabs. Islam did not come for a certain arena. Islam came for the whole of mankind. Therefore we have the responsibility to carry Islam because there is no prophet after Muhammad sallallahu And the inheritance of the prophets, which is the knowledge, is what we have today. And Allah has shown us through the beloved Muhammad how we need to implement Islam and how we must carry Islam in order to bring the nur of Islam to the whole of mankind. And that's a very important concept that we should recognize. We should never be happy that we are where we are, that we are Muslim, alhamdulillah. We can never be happy and satisfied with that. And there's many reasons. One including the fact that we are not in the reality or in the situation which Islam obliges us to be in. And when Allah says in the Quran, Kuntum khaira ummah linas. You are the best people, you are the best nation that are brought upon mankind. We need to be that example, that model. A model that currently we're not able to demonstrate to the world because of the own economic, political, social issues which are manifest and right. That once upon a time we were the standard, we were the example, we were the benchmark. And that's where we need to be today. And secondly, we've got to convey Islam to the whole of humanity. So we don't allow anyone on Yom Qiyamah to say, well, he didn't tell me anything. It's our responsibility to 